Hi, Misha here, and as we've kind of promised for a bit, we have some more Mosins for you. These are all three carbines on the table. In fact, they're all cut down from long rifles. Here we have a so-called 9138. Here is a Another 9138, a little bit different flavor. And then finally, we have a 9159. Notice it has the round receiver. Like I said, these are all cut downs from long rifles, and they're all cut down to Mosin Nagant M38 spec, so shorter forearm and a 20 and a half inch barrel. And they all are post war conversions. Let's start with this one. The 9138 is generally accepted to be from Czechoslovakia post war. World War II. These first were known in the West in the early 60s via Germany, so they were obviously done, at least some of them, prior to that. They are almost always built on hex receivers, and they are almost always using older Mosin M91s. A few 9130s are known to have been cut down, but mostly older 91s. This one, for example, was originally made in France under contract for Russia in 1895, went to Imperial Russia, then was in Soviet Russia, and then wound up in Czechoslovakia. So it has a ton of proof and acceptance markings. When they did that, now sometimes they would just drop these in leftover M44 stocks. And this one looks to be that, although it could be a converted 9130. But a lot of the times, they would actually use the original 91 stock and cut it down. And this one appears to be that because of the more rounded forearm. Some of them are even pre-1908 and don't have the, uh, the cross bolt for reinforcing. So definitely original stocks. Now what's interesting about them cutting the stock down, if you notice the handguard isn't even here, the upper, that's pretty common for these. But even more interesting, it has the groove for the M44 type bayonet, but these really aren't ever found with bayonets. But why would they groove, especially if you're cutting down the stock? Also, if you look at the front sight, it has kind of the squared off larger M44 base. It's considered, theorized, that perhaps once they were going to add bayonets to these but change their minds. So basically making them 9144s rather than 9138s. And that name is kind of informal, unofficial. It's just the name that's been assigned to them. Works as well as anything. So we know the conversion work was done in Czechoslovakia in the 40s or 50s. We don't know how many were converted. Um, some have appeared in Russia and East Germany. Rumors of some in Vietnam have circulated for decades, but there's really never been concrete evidence, so we don't know. It is worth pointing out these have true carbine rear sights, so out to a thousand meters short. And that is about it. It is a cut down. I said the same with this one here. This one, by the way, was originally made in Nizhevsk 
in 1897 in Imperial Russia. So a very early Russian production. So let's compare that to a 9159. Once these are considered quite uncommon and rare in the US, and today they're still desirable, but not as rare as people once thought. Quite a few were imported eventually. These were often made from cutting down 9130s. Often World War II era guns, like 1942, 1943. So probably guns that had the bores at the muzzle eroded. You know, the rifling was better towards the chamber, but out front was, was shot. You know, why not repurpose it? So most of them will have the round receiver, but a few 91s have been spotted. Some of these will be in cut down 9130 stocks, which is quite common. A few like this one are in M44 stocks. But probably the biggest, most interesting thing are the sights. This has an M38 style base, more rounded and curved, but it is unique to this gun. It has a more gentle step and a more rounded edge, but it's not the big block style on the 9138. Although, of course, the hood and post are the same. These were definitely never issued with bayonets as far as we know. The handguard actually seems to fit pretty well on these. But the real telltale for a 59 is the rear side. If you notice, it is the long style. Here's this for the 9130 rifle. There's this carbine rear side again, just to be thorough. Quite a bit shorter. So that's the easiest way to tell at a glance. You can also tell because they did modify by shaving off the portion here for longer ranges, making it just go at least march to 1,000 meters like a carbine. So it's a modified rifle rear sight on these. The production or conversion for the 9159 is a little more interesting too. We don't know for sure who did these and the win is really only because they themselves are marked 9159 so we can assume in the 60s. At first years ago when I acquired my original one back in the late 90s everyone just kind of thought they were Bulgarian because they some of them had Bulgarian property marks on the stocks. But other people quickly pointed out, hey, just because they went to Bulgaria later doesn't mean they were made there. For example, I've got a 91 long rifle that has the Bulgarian pine cone, as it's called on the stock, and it's 1915 Peter the Great. So just because they wound up in Bulgaria doesn't mean they did the work. And it seems like more recently, more and more evidence has come to light to suggest these were done in the Soviet Union. Uh, some people have reported pictures or encountering Soviet troops with these. And there are some documented bring back 9159s from Vietnam. So it honestly just seems more likely to be Russia. Again, they probably had a bunch of World War II era 9130s with bad bores, at least the last bit out. And uh, communist nations were known for their kind of make work programs or you know, stockpiling guns for a what-if scenario, so why not put some people to work refurbishing and slightly modernizing a Mosin as much as you can modernize a Mosin, that is. I mean, the actions on all three of these are just your typical. Nothing special. I have noticed the 9159s do tend to have relatively nice triggers. Very nice for Mosin, but in the general sense. So the triggers seem to be nice. Most of them we received in the US were in excellent to unissued condition. This is a nice looking Mosin in general, 
but for a 9159 it's only average I have had some that were truly just new in the wrap or at least you know unissued in the wrap this one's obviously not that nice but a good shooter grade one funny story these came in late 90s early 2000s the 9159 was kind of the first nice Mosin I had ever held prior to that the ones I had handled were older inner arms imports from say Finland and while they were still perfectly shootable, some of them even with great bores, like the wood was chewed up and the finish was worn. So for me, a 9159 was the first time I held a Mosin and thought, oh, so this is what they look like when new or in nice shape. Just kind of found that amusing from back then. But yeah, that's about all there is, guys, because uh, by the point these guns were being created, the Mosin at best was a second line gun or for police use or militia use maybe guard use it was certainly well past its prime but these were available so we thought we would uh, share a video with you if you are interested in Mosin variants we have a playlist including ones on the Hungarian, Romanian, Polish, so on and so forth. So you might want to check that out if you haven't already. Well, any questions or comments, please do post them below. And if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And also, if you'd like to help us get to the range, please check out the link to our Patreon page. Well, this is Misha, and we will catch you very soon next time.